One of my favorite things to do, no matter what the time of the year, is to go out into the wild and make some sort of wild tea from any variety of plants or trees. But today, I'm on the hunt for one very specific thing. It's in late October, early November, and it's the perfect time of year for rose hips. So come along. I'm headed down here to the water's edge where I see a ton of wild rose hips. Let's get down a little bit closer and see what they look like. There are all kinds of wild rose bushes along the edge of this big creek. These are rose hips. Okay, but these aren't necessarily the ones that I'm looking for. They're very small and they're hard to process. I'll teach you how to process them here in just a minute. But these I'm going to pass over today, even though there are so many. If you cut into these little tiny berries, you'll quickly find that they're mostly seed, very little flesh at all. These, I want you to look at the thorns on these particular roses. They're big, almost like little talons of a raptor. They're really, really, really sharp, hooked thorns that can dig into you very quickly. And thorns are an identifying feature of the wild rose. Now, one thing I wanna point out while I'm standing here that's really unique is I've got a plant right here behind me. That's an invasive species. Like I'm getting hung up in the rose right now. You can hear it ripping. It's like hung in my hair right now. It's all over the place. But I wanna show you this particular plant right here. You can see growing right next to this wild rose is another type of red berry that to the untrained eye looks very, very similar. But this isn't the rose hip. In fact, it's not an edible berry at all. It's not on the human menu at all. It's good for birds, but not for humans. This is an invasive species, an invasive plant called Asian honeysuckle, and it has completely invaded the Midwest, North America. These berries, they look very similar to rose hips this time of year. In fact, there's a lot of red berries this time of year that look very similar to rose hips, but we're gonna pass over these and we're gonna focus on the key identifying features for the rose, which I'll talk about as soon as I find the one I'm looking for. And here's one that I'm really looking for. This is what's called the wrinkled rose or Rosa rugosa. And as you can see right here, the rose hips on this particular plant are much bigger. Look at how big they are in comparison to my fingers. Just massive hips. There aren't very many of them, but I don't need very many in order to make rose hip tea. In fact, two or three will be plenty. Let me go over a couple of the features of this. Now this is in the fall, obviously. Uh, and so the rose hips starting to dry and, and um, wither up a little bit, but that's okay because it doesn't matter. These can be completely dried out. In fact, the way I preserve these is by drying them. So they don't have to be perfectly ripe and fleshy. It's totally fine for them to be like this in the fall. Look at these little brown features on the end. These are leftover sepals and you're gonna find those on all rose hips. They're gonna be different sizes, but you're gonna find these on the bottom. You're gonna have the stem on top and you're gonna have the fleshy fruit part in the middle and then you're gonna have all these little sepals on the bottom. Should be probably five or so, okay? Now the rose plant is uh, pretty easy to identify as far as plants go. They all have stickers. You can see all these little stickers running up and down the stems. Uh, that's one identifying feature. We've got compound leaves with opposite facing leaflets and an odd number of leaflets. Like this leaflet right here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven leaflets on one compound leaf, okay? And this particular rose has a really neat set of wings at the base of the leaf. It's got a really nice set of wings right at the base of the leaf there. So those are a few identifying features. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest a couple of these rose hips, go find a nice place to make a fire and make some rose hip tea.
Now I've only got two rose hips there, but that's all I'll need for making a really nice cup of rose hip tea. Let's talk about how to process these hips. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife, I'm just gonna cut them right in half. Now it's really important that you see what the inside of these looks like. You can see, like especially right up here, see all of those little tiny hairs? We need to process those hairs out. So we gotta scrape those hairs out. You can see all of those right here, especially. We gotta take out all of these hairs because a really interesting fact here is that commercially harvested itching powder that you find in the gag and joke section of a magic shop is actually the hairs inside of rose hips, believe it or not. And so the last thing you want is to ingest all of these hairs, especially in a tea. You'll be itching and regretting it for weeks, okay? So I'm gonna take a little bit of time. I'm going to scrape out all of the seeds and the hairs inside of these hips, which isn't too hard to do. I wanna make sure to get as many of those out as I can. There's a lot of them in there. So I'm just gonna scrape, 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 scrape. 